Hello, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar. Delegation is not a dirty word. If you've decided to join us, then uh, congratulations, because I'd say you're already off to a very good start. Seeking out help and seeking out advice for your business means a few things usually. Um, a, it usually means that your business is ready to expand. Scaling your business is such an important step in its healthy growth and being able to control how that growth occurs and to be ready for the new challenges ahead already gives you a leg up. And B, you realize and you accept that you cannot run your business on your own. It's just not possible. Every great business, everyone you've seen that has reached that level that you want to get to, every great business has a team of people that make it so. And learning how to properly delegate is the first step in achieving that level of success that you're trying to reach if you're not there yet already. And Part of the reason why we have these discussions all the time is because we understand that handing work off and handing responsibility off to someone else makes a lot of people very uneasy, and that's completely understandable. When you're running your own business, you want to make sure that everything is done properly and that everything is done to the level that you expect, and that's perfectly normal. After all, it is your business, and it's your name on the line and your reputation. So learning how to properly delegate, knowing the steps in, in going about it is the first step, really, of scaling your business to a place where you'll be able to work on what you need to work on so that your business can grow. So today we'll be discussing the best ways to go about delegating um, so that we can ensure that the work stays at the level that you want and the level that you expect and so that the process isn't too overwhelming for you or for your assistant. So first, um, we'd like to just do a little bit of an introduction. Uh, so with C3 Workplace, for over two decades, we've been helping small business owners, entrepreneurs, and business professionals improve their revenues with our adaptable office space, business training, online business classes and courses, and our back office resources. For many business owners, we are the people they delegate to. We handle anything from bookkeeping, telephone answering, calendar scheduling, data input and management, marketing support, and sales support for a wide variety of, of, of businesses. And we also help business owners with recruiting and with hiring full-time assistants. Um, we hire for other businesses the same way we would hire for ourselves. We know what to look for, and we can spot the kind of talent that will bolster your business. So this isn't just you know, uh, something that we, we talk about casually. Knowing how to delegate, knowing how to manage a team, it is what we do. It is our specialty. And um, not only do we help hundreds and have helped thousands over the past 20 years, but um, we know who to look for if you're looking to get someone full time as well. As for me, my name is Kelly Loro, and I am a client support specialist and senior team member with C3 Workplace. I've been with C3 Workplace now for about eight years, uh, but I've been working with small businesses for a little over 10. I've worked with a lot of different business owners uh, at different places in their careers. And I also work very closely with Donna Miller, who is the president and owner of C3 Workplace, uh, to help teach the Earn More program. That's a professional development course that we offer here that helps people get their businesses to the level of earning potential that they know that they can get to. So I've worked with a wide variety of business owners on um, really streamlining their back end, looking at their processes, figuring out what are the best ways to make their business really hum. Because the real heart of the matter here in delegation is being able to work on the, the tasks and you know the different jobs that you specifically are good at. When you own a business, there is a lot of nuance, a lot of, as we call it, administrivia, a lot of uh, small detail things that need to get done that you really shouldn't be doing yourself because it, it is a waste of time for your skill set. So to get started, um, what we want to do is go over some of the signs 
that you need to delegate. And I'm sure, again, if you're watching this and participating, then you've already seen some of these signs and um, you know that, that something needs to be done because once you get to that point, it's, it's very obvious when you need to get help and when you need uh, you know, to bring someone onto your team. So some of the signs you need to delegate. Number one is you're missing calls, you're missing appointments, and or you're missing events. Now, this can be literal, that you're literally, oh, I missed that call because I was working on this thing. I couldn't get to this appointment because I, you know, I had too much to do in my, in, my, in my schedule. I couldn't get to it. I couldn't get to that networking event. I just cannot take a time away from my business. These are really huge red flags because if you're missing any kind of work, that's a big problem. Now, on the flip side too, there's also the potential in this first bullet point, it could be literal, you're missing literal calls, or you're missing the potential to make these calls or to schedule these calls. You're missing the potential to have appointments with people that you should be in a room with. Um, as a business owner, you should be networking, you should be going to events, you should be doing speaking engagements because that is what drives your business, that is what gets you clients, and if you're not able to be the driving force for that, then you're going to suffer as a result. So those are some of the first signs that you're just missing a lot of the uh, moments, you know, missing calls, appointments, events that you should be that you should be having. The second one is you're unable to take time off, and this is a hugely important point. A lot of business owners, especially you know, when you talk to them one on one, like like we do in our in our industry. A lot of them start their business because they want the autonomy of owning their own business, to make their own schedules, to have the freedom to have the life that they want to have without being tied down. However, once you really get into the thick of it and you see how much really needs to get done to run a business, a lot of people find that they're not able to take time off because they're just so engrossed in, in keeping their business running and making sure everything is going to plan. And that is a huge problem because you need to take time off. You need to be able to step away from the business. You need to be able to take vacations or time away or time with family. You shouldn't, you know, the work-life balance needs to be there. And a lot of people sort of put that to the wayside, which is understandable because you think, oh, I'm fine, you know, I, I missed a few things, but you know, my business comes first. And yes, your business is always super important, but you're not going to be able to get your business to the level it needs to be unless you have that decompressing time to really focus on what needs to happen in the future. If you're constantly drowning in nuance and stuck in the weeds, you're not going to have the time to plan. You're not going to have the time to just take a breather. Uh, you're going to be overwhelmed and you're going to be burnt out. And once you get to that point, you know, it, it takes a lot to come back from it. You're losing time. You're uh, you know, probably losing appointment times or you're losing work time because you're, you're needing to focus on your own mental health. And it's important that you schedule that beforehand. Taking time off is a huge thing. You know, it's, it's a huge part of owning a business. And I know it seems impossible, but if you're, if you know how to properly delegate and you know how to, how to get your business running without you having to be there 24 seven, you will see the difference almost immediately. Uh, the third we have here obviously is you've lost some clients that's always a huge problem if you're losing clients for any reason maybe it's because of point a you're missing calls you're missing appointments or you're missing events or it could be if you're so engrossed in the nuance of the business and trying to keep things going that you haven't been able to dedicate the time you need to your clients that is a problem you know the client comes first and if you're not able to give them the attention that they require that will result in either lost clients or unhappy clients word of mouth might you know turn south and you don't want that to happen to you you want to be able to focus your attentions where they need to be still run your business at the same time and then usually all of these culminate into just a general feeling of being overwhelmed and helpless and that you know goes hand in hand with with 
point B where you're unable to step away from it. It just feels like this crushing weight. I need to run my business, but I just can't take the time away. You need to be able to delegate out, to be able to have people help you so that you can be your best self for your business because that's exactly why you started your business. You are you know, excellent at the specific job that you do, that you run your business with. That's what you should be honing. That's what you should be focusing on. If you have to be doing data entry, bookkeeping, telephone answering, calendar scheduling, that, those kinds of things that need to get done but aren't necessarily in your wheelhouse, then you're wasting your potential to make your business what it could be. So moving on, we see, we'll talk about here how to begin this process of delegating. Now, before you hire someone, before you start, you know, handing things off to somebody, you need to do some homework yourself. You need to be able to analyze your own tasks and your own time and what you're focusing on so that you know before you bring someone on what you're giving them. Because there's nothing worse than hiring someone and being like, oh crap, what do I give them? You need to have a plan in place so that when you do bring someone on, when you do hire someone, you'll already have a plan on where to begin. So first off, you analyze your tasks and time. And on the next slide, you'll see we'll have an example of um, you know, how we would suggest you do that because you should be putting your time in so you know exactly how many hours this person might need to be working on and what they are working on. Um, so I would say look at the kind of work you're doing on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and on a monthly basis and list them out. Um, and then from there, once you have these tasks sort of listed out, you can categorize them. So we sort of go by these three main categories. You have the must, which are things you must delegate. Like I said, clerical things, things that are a waste of your time, things are form of procrastination, i.e. social media. <laughs> a lot of these things that, again, need to get done, but you shouldn't be doing them. Those are the musts. Then there's the shoulds. The things you should delegate, um, they take a bit of training or a protocol or a higher skill level. So again, on the next slide, you'll see some uh, examples of what we mean by um, the shoulds. So it's things that need to get done, things that you probably have been doing that you might be a little hesitant to give up, maybe in terms of uh, being the voice in term, you know, on social media, having people write the content, writing blogs, doing these kinds of things that you are confident you have your voice and you, you have you know, the, the vibe and the feel of the business and it, it probably will take a little bit of training or just a little bit of, of keeping an eye to make sure that whoever you hire is able to, to do this for you. And then the last one is the core, which is what I do drives the business forward. This is where you should live. All of the tasks that you're doing on a daily basis should only be the core. Ideally, you know, this isn't always perfect. Sometimes you're still gonna have to do some shoulds, but what your goal should be is focusing on the core. Um, and that is what you do that drives the business forward. It's the business development. It's the things that only you can do. And that's where you need to live as the business owner. And then after that, you need to list them out and take a look um, so you can start your plan of delegation. So here's an example of what we mean by listing out your tasks and being able to um, put as, you know, see the hours that you spend. So again, must is things you must delegate, should are things you, sh you really should, um, but it might take a little bit of training, and then core are the things that you should be focusing on. And what's really great about this um, analysis is that it's able to show you really the, the, the amount of hours that you can save by delegating even just the musts. You know, even if you keep the shoulds and the core, you can still free up almost 10 hours of your time. So some of the examples of musts, depositing checks, you don't need to do that. If you can have somebody else go to the bank, you know, you set up a system so somebody else can go do that. Um, confirming appointments, you don't need to do that. There's, I mean, you, there's even companies that will send texts or, you know, there's, there's a million ways that you can have this done that you don't have to do it. Um, following up on emails, that, you know, if you have some sort of template or boilerplate, you can have someone do it for you, or you can spend some time setting up a CRM system so that there's an automatic reply. That's always a good option as well. Um, doing research of any kind is always something that should be delegated. And of course, um, sort of prospecting calls are things that you can, you can hand off as well. Um, 
calls regarding speaking, that can be a must. It also could potentially fall under the shoulds because anything that's sort of being your voice or being a representation of your business, I would suggest, you know, just testing it out, keeping an eye, making sure that how things are being said, how their, um, how your persona is, is being presented to the public is very important. So you want to make sure that you're happy with it, that the person you hire is doing it correctly and that, you know, there's no gaps in, in, in wording or in the mission and any of those things that might fall by the wayside if you're not paying attention. So the shoulds, um, as I mentioned, social media posts, that's a big form of procrastination. However, it needs to get, it needs to happen. And it also needs a bit of training because you want to make sure the voice is there. Developing content is the same thing, creating e-letters, blogs, any kind of, uh, you know, representation of you. Um, Follow-up calls and scheduling appointments, like I said, that's similar to calls regarding speaking, where you want to make sure <clears throat> that the person um, has, has the, the, the way you want them to be, has the voice, has, has the articulation, has the wording, you know, you want to make sure that, that you're being represented properly. And then there's bookkeeping, obviously, which you can always uh, hand off. It's always great to have someone there. Obviously, it takes time to go through the books at first, but once it's automated, it is a godsend. And then, you know, creations of PowerPoints. Again, you want to make sure the look is good, that everything, um, the, you know, what you're talking about is there and is, is properly articulated. Um, but with that, you could just look it over and it's fine. And the core, the things you should be focusing on is developing the content and why we have um, two hours in both or one an hour in there and one hour in there is that you should be doing the creativity behind it. You should be the driving force on what you want to talk about and then you should be able to hand that off to somebody and they actually develop it. So in terms of say a blog, you should be able to say, I want to have a blog on XYZ and these are the four points I want to discuss can you write this? Those kinds of things. That's how you delegate that. Client site visits, you should always be, um, you know, anything sales related, you should be the face of. Um, especially, I mean, you can always hire sales, but I'd say in the beginning, you want to make sure that you're that driving force for clients and uh, for sales. Networking the same, prospecting calls, um, reviewing the financial reports, you should always be a part of that. You should have your hand in it. You should always be aware of what's happening with your numbers because you don't want there to be any surprises, <laughs> you know, kind of end of year or, you know, quarterly review and it's just like, oh my goodness, what has been going on? You should always have your hand in being, even if it's just a weekly report, a monthly report, you should be reviewing your financials. Um, potential opportunities for sales you should be reviewing, and concepts. Again, sort of goes in, in hand in hand with um, developing content, is you're creating the concepts. So if you just take a look at the bottom here, if you delegate just the musts, again, you're, you're you know, saving yourself nine and a half hours. If you do both, that's eight and a half hours. <laughs> so that's a great starting point for um, figuring out how you can break up your work day to give to, you know, to delegate to somebody else. So the first step really is how do you find the person who will help you? And like it says here, you know, a good assistant can help boost your productivity, but a great assistant becomes a partner. And that is so true that um, it, it's, it can be hard to reach that point where the person becomes a partner, but you'll get there and it takes, you know, it takes work on both sides, but it's invaluable, really. It really is when you have somebody on your side that gets your business, that gets you and can help you, your business will completely transform because you'll be able to focus, they'll be able to own the responsibilities they have and it will begin the steps of your business becoming that well-oiled machine where you can step away, you can go away for a week, a month, you know, that is the dream. That's the goal. You want to be able to have your business run without you having to micromanage or you having to be knee deep in every single issue that arises. So 
finding the help you need first off is, is a huge step, and that's really one of the most important. So some of the things that we look out for, because as I'd mentioned before, we also do some recruiting for businesses, and we hire for ourselves as well. We have a lot of great um, you know, assistants that are on our team, and we always make sure we, we look for specific traits and make sure that they can own the work, that they're up to the task, and that you're hiring the right people. Because if you don't hire the right people, then you're going to spend more time and you're going to waste more money. And that, obviously, you don't want to do. So first off, you want to make sure that they're professional. Um, you'll see this in, you know, with the interview, their professional demeanor, friendly, clean and professional appearance, maintains good eye contact, and they're clear and articulate when they're speaking. Um, there's a big difference when you see someone who who has this just the professional demeanor just just they have the it factor versus someone who's just sort of looking for a part-time job and not to say that you know someone who who just needs some work you know some part-time work isn't a valuable resource they are um, and they are very helpful <clears throat> when you need just small tasks and things that aren't too immersive in your business, um, you will definitely need to hire people, you know, like that just to do like data entry to do the tasks that um, perhaps if you're finding, a, you know, more of a personal assistant or someone closer to you, there's a difference in how they'll work and the things that they'll be dealing with. So you want to make sure that you're comfortable with the person. And, you know, first impressions are huge, hugely important. And they're very true. If once you are meeting with someone and if, if the professional it factor for you personally isn't there, and this is different for everybody, but if it's not there for you, then you should definitely pay attention to that. Um, next is trustworthy. This might be hard to gauge in the interview, but there are ways to find out. So one of the ways we try to do is ask to explain the scope of their prior experience clearly. Because <clears throat> with assistance, and someone helping you with your business, there are a lot of times when they're going to be dealing with sensitive information, maybe your bank statements, maybe your health insurance, maybe your family information. There's a lot of things that, you know, assistants help with that could be personal, they could be confidential. So you want to make sure the person, obviously depending on the type of work you're looking to delegate, but you want to make sure they're trustworthy. So when you're interviewing this person or when you're talking to the company you're going to outsource to, Ask for examples, um, especially things that might be specific to your industry, specific to you. They should be able to provide you with, you know, uh, may at least one or two examples of how they've been able to, um, you know, deal with whatever trustworthy um, situation they might have run into with their past boss or or what they've you know what the relationship was like um, there are ways to find out this information because it is very important you want to make sure that the person is sort of in it with you and um, will be that that second hand you know that um, that right hand person for you because that's really what you need and what you want next we have Good communication skills. This is huge, especially if they're going to be any sort of um, front end facing for your business, using the phones, being a receptionist, going to events for you, or anything like that. You want to make sure that the communication skills are on the level they need to be. Um, a lot of times, it's people are nervous during interviews, but you will always be able to tell. Um, when there's a huge gap in communication skills. And a lot of those are the minimal filler words like, um, like, uh, okay, you know. There will barely be a sentence that is completed without there being a filler word inserted into it. And that can be very difficult to deal with, especially on a daily basis. And especially if you're trying to project, um, you know, a certain level of professional uh, appearance you know, to your clients. You want to make sure that you're impressing. Second is establishing clear understanding of questions during the interview. Uh, I, we've run into this many times where you have to explain it three or four times and it's still not getting through and that's sort of a red flag. Uh, this one's a great one and one we're always impressed by is someone who asks clear, concise, and well thought out questions. Uh, a lot of times people look like deer in headlights when you're interviewing and they say, well, you know, you say to them, 
do you have any questions for me? And if they don't have anything prepared, it's not that it's a bad thing, but it's always more impressive when they do. So that's always something to keep an eye out for. And then fourth, answers questions thoroughly without rambling. Some people are just chatty. There's nothing, there's no problem with that, uh, especially if, you know, if that's something that you're, you're okay with, and that's fine. Um, if it's a problem, <laughs> then you'll know right away. And good communication skills are a huge part of not just being, uh, you know, a, a contact for your clients and for other people in your business, but you're dealing, you know, you're going to be working with this person on a daily basis. So you want to make sure that you're able to communicate properly with them and that there's not any huge wedges, uh, you know, stopping you from doing that. Next is being tech savvy. Um, a lot of people in certain industries think that, um, you know, they might not need somebody like this, but I would always recommend finding somebody who knows more than you. <laughs> That's um, really the, you know, you don't need, you know, some tech wizard that, that you know, can, can code and break into the government or something like that. You don't need that, but you just need someone who's better than you at what you need to get done. So finding out their technology proficiencies is a huge, uh, a huge part of it. And a lot of times people will list it on the resumes and if not, ask them. And if it seems like they don't know perhaps as much as you do about certain programs, then what that means is you're going to have to train them. And part of having an assistant is that you don't want to have to train them on things that they should know already. Um, so for instance, if they are not very proficient in say Microsoft Word or just Microsoft Suite in general, or, you know, basic email, or you'd be surprised on a lot of uh, programs that people think they're proficient in that they're not. <laughs> so that brings us to point two, where implement tech tests during your interview process. Uh, there are plenty of programs that will offer a service will, where they have tests sort of made for you already. Or what we do is when there's a position that we're recruiting for, we will create a test. So if there's, you know, something that involves data entry or something that involves research, we just make, you know, a very small, easy test and ask them to just complete it at their interview. So you can see, and there's a lot of things you can see from, you know, taking 15 minutes, 30 minutes to take a quick test to see, uh, you know, how they input things into Excel, how their spelling is, their grammar, these kinds of things that you sometimes don't find out are not very good until after you've hired somebody. So we would definitely recommend having a test just to make sure that what they say they're good in, they are good in, and that um, they should be teaching you some you know, to, to a point. They should be able to teach you some things. They should know some things um, technology-wise that are helpful because that is the point of an assistant. You don't want to have to train them on everything. You, there are certain things that they should know already. And then last is time management. Uh, this is a huge point because this is what they'll be helping you with. So you want to make sure that they're good at it. And for that, you just have to require examples of past times. This is one of our favorite questions. Require examples of past times when they've had to adjust priorities to meet changing demands in the workplace. Um, how, do, how do they deal with sort of last minute changes? How do they deal with, with something that needs to reprioritize their entire day? Because you, as a business owner, you know things pop up and you have to be able to roll with the punches. And you want to make sure that this person who's helping you isn't going to freak out <laughs> and, like, have a breakdown because they need to send an email at 10 instead of 2 or something. You know, like, there's always these small things and you want to make sure that uh, there's this level of comfort in being able to adjust priorities. So once you find your person that you are happy with and that you feel really confident, you have to figure out how to manage the workload. So you've listed everything out, you have everything categorized, and now you want to make sure you're giving the person that you've hired or that you've outsourced to, you're giving them the tasks in a way that's not overwhelming or not confusing and that they'll get done properly. So <clears throat> you've broken down the tasks. I would say create levels. So what you should give them first are um, obviously you know, tasks that you, that you have to do every day. Avoid delegating tasks that are like once a year. Not that they can't do it, but when you're first starting out, you want to see the kind of work they do on a daily basis, and you want to make sure that it's done properly. Um, 
and there's levels too. There are some things that maybe are a little bit more advanced that you might not want to give to them right away because you want to see how this this person or this this company does with um, the day to day things that you know sending an email or doing data entry or doing this things that aren't vital that won't cause you know a tsunami of problems after if if something is to go wrong uh, you want to be able to monitor. Um, and before, you know, you even are able to give off these tasks, you need to document the procedures. So you need to create protocols um, so that they are able to reference a document without having to constantly go to you with questions. Uh, another thing we do too, which we find very helpful and sees, you know, helps us see how uh, the person works, is you show them how to do a certain task and you ask them to write the ask them to write the protocol as they're listening. Uh, see the kinds of things they pick up on, see the kind of information that they are able to, to take in and what they do with it, see how they're able to document it. Um, you know, what, what does that look like in their world? And it might also help you to look at some of your own processes and think like, wow, that was way more convoluted than it needed to be. <laughs> Maybe I should simmer down, you know, and scale back a bit. But it's helpful just, and it's, it's helpful for both of you because you'll be able to work on your working relationship and you'll be able to figure out how, like the dynamic between you two because that is really where the, the, the initial work you put into it is because you need to know how to interact, how this relationship is going to work um, to make sure that it's the right one. Now, when doing protocols, we love to do, um, we use screenshots a lot, and we also use video tutorials. I personally use Active Presenter all the time. It's great and it's free. And that's one of those programs that can um, record your desktop as you're working on it, and you can also record uh, your voice. So you'll be able to walk through a process with the video, I would recommend um, for tasks that don't change very often, which you know doesn't always happen, but if there's a task that has stayed pretty steady in, in the way it's been done for the past couple of years, that I would recommend doing a video, especially if there's a lot of steps in terms of clicking or places on, on the screen that might get confusing, use a video. Otherwise, if it's something that has to do with maybe like Google, like analytics or Facebook or something, you know, a lot of those, those companies that change their layout very often, I wouldn't recommend a video for that because then you're going to have to keep making new ones. Whereas if you just have a written protocol or a protocol with sc uh, screenshots, you can easily edit. So anything that requires, um, you know, protocols with something that changes a lot, we would recommend doing more of the, the written one with screenshots or without whatever you prefer. Um, because otherwise it's going to be pain in the butt to, <laughs> to re to re record your video all the time. And then before even giving it to this person, I would say test the protocol and ask somebody externally to review it. Your friend, your your partner, your kids, anybody, you know, ask them just say, can you read this over? Is it ridiculously confusing? Does it make sense? Just get some feedback because when you're too close to something, you are so disconnected that you, you know you might not even realize that maybe you're missing a step or that maybe it, you know, it, it didn't bring you to the place you needed to bring you. It, you never know what it looks like from the outside when you're so close to it. So next we have, um, once you're able to give work off to this assistant or to this company that you've outsourced to, you wanna make sure you're staying informed on what they're doing and how they're doing. So first off, we like to start off with creating checkpoints. So you give, you know, a certain task to somebody. You say, I need to research, you know, some speaking engagements. I want, I'm going to Florida at the end of the year and I want to be able to speak at two conventions, hypothetically. Can you, you know, spend two hours, take a look, see what you can find? Because you don't want your assistant or the company, you don't want anybody to fall into a rabbit hole. Because then it's just a waste of everybody's time. Um, with any kind of work they do, you want to see the speed at which they work, you want to see the efficiency. Um, so this is the great way to see that at first, is to create a checkpoint. You say, work on this for X amount of time, then come back to me and we'll discuss. So you'll be able to see how far they get, you'll be able to see the kind of information, how they lay it out, you'll be able to really get an idea of the way that this person or these people work. So it either works for you or it doesn't, or you can 
adjust your needs to to make sure that you know that what you're expecting is being met or isn't this is where you know you have to be very vigilant to make sure that things are being done properly because the longer you wait the harder it is <laughs> to tell someone I don't like how this was done um, so I would say right away you want to do something like this over communicating is always good at first because you want to make sure they understand what you want you want to make sure they're aware of uh, what is expected of them and you want to make sure that they feel comfortable with what they're doing and what you're asking them. So it might be redundant at first. It might seem like overkill, but you need to make sure that you are being heard. You want to make sure that they're being heard. I would say you two should meet um, at least once a week, especially in the beginning, maybe even more depending on the type of tasks that you're working on, because this is very, very important just for your working relationship. Um, have your assistant or the company you've outsourced to have them track their time so you can keep an eye on how long they're spending on things. Uh, we find a lot of people, clients especially, when you're working on, when you've done something for a long time, it feels like it takes less time than it actually does. Um, so you might not realize that something you do all the time actually takes about an hour and a half. When you think in your mind it's like oh it takes like 20 minutes so you want to me you want to be aware of what's going on in terms of time and what's going on in terms of progress so um, you can have your people track their times um, with our company here we use a program called T sheets where you literally have um, either projects or you have companies or you have information that you categorize and you create and you just clock in and you you know the, the app the the software just tracks your time for you and when you're done with whatever you're doing you clock out or you change over to something else so it's it's very easy it's very seamless and simple to uh, to implement and we would recommend uh, like I said it's called t-sheets um, as they're working have them continue to document uh, updating protocols is always going to be a necessary thing whether it's they tweak the way it's done so that it maybe it takes less time that's the ideal situation is you want to hire somebody who's going to look at the things you did and say, hey, you know what, you could do it much easier if you did this way. That's like the dream. <laughs> That's what you want is someone who's going to uh, make just, just make things easier for you and just make things easier overall for everybody. So you want to continue to document and make sure that, um, you know, things are always being reassessed and looked at because processes get stale, software changes, there's always changes. That's life, you know, that's just how it is. So you're going to have to continue to document it. And then um, second is that we have a, a task management software that we use uh, in our company. And it's great because you're able to assign tasks, assign projects. You can have chats, you can have messages. There's a calendar where you can actually take a a look and you see everything that's coming up, all the due dates coming up, everything. And what's great about it is that it keeps everything centralized so you can see pretty much everything you've got going on in your company in one central spot. And that is really a huge help when you're working with other people, when you're delegating and you have assistants and you have other people on your team that you want to make sure you know what they're doing, you want to make sure things are being done in the proper timelines, that you're meeting deadlines, nothing's falling through the cracks. Uh, we use a program called Asana, and uh, it works for us. We have a lot of, uh, you know, admins that are are remote, so we have some that are, you know, across the country. We we've had admins work uh, internationally for you know about a month or so. So we and we're still able to work together. We're still able to take care of our clients, and we have clients that are international. So there's always like just moving pieces everywhere. But for us, Asana is that central hub where we can see everyone's workload. We see the progress of everything. If there's questions, everything goes in there. So there's nothing that you know you don't have to worry about all these different questions and, and anything in different places. One's in your email, one's written on a post-it note, one's here, one's there. So everything is very centralized. And as the manager and the owner of your business, this will be invaluable for you because you'll be able to really see a snapshot of everything that's going on all at once. And now once you have somebody working for you and things are humming along, it's time to take a look back at what you're doing and to make sure that you're capitalizing on your time that you've gained now from 
from delegating to somebody and from hiring somebody. So the question is, what do you do with that extra time? Uh, do you do some networking, some LinkedIn networking, some some messages, you know, e-letters? You want to write some blogs or, or new content for your website? Um, a lot of thought leadership stems from just having the time <laughs> to talk about your industry and talk about your expertise and why you are the person that your clients should go to. That all comes with time. You just need time to do that stuff. And when you're dealing with the, the administrivia of the day to day, you don't have the time to do that. And that's why a lot of businesses suffer. Uh, you want to be able to make those business dials and, and those outgoing calls and to figure out, you know, the next steps for your business and to be the driving force. So if you see here, here's just an example that we created of, um, of how to translate the time that you're gaining into hard dollars. So if we're going to take a hypothetical, we're going to take the musts and the shoulds, and you're going to give that to an assistant. So you're gaining 18 and a half hours. So let's just say you're going to use that time to make prospecting calls. So hypothetically, let's say you can make 15 calls in an hour. That's 277.5 calls over the span of these 18.5 hours. Now, if you take 10% conversion from that, uh, from the calls to a meeting, so perhaps you get about 27 meetings. From that, you take 10% conversion from meetings to clients, so you get 2.775 new clients, we'll say. Now, if the lifetime value of a client is 5,000, then this is the amount of money that you're gaining just from delegating from these 18.5 hours. Obviously, these are just hypothetical numbers and it's different for every person, but that's a huge, that's a huge number. And it's, and that's only for, you know, 18 and a half hours. That's, there's so much potential in what you as the business owner can and should be doing instead of the mundane day-to-day, -day, data entry, phone answering, calendar scheduling, you really should not be working on those things because it's eating up your time and as a result, it's eating up your money. And that's the worst. <laughs> you wanna make sure that you're not leaving money on the table and that you're not you know, wasting your own potential. Again, like we said, you went into business on your own for a very specific reason because there's something that you're very good at. There's something that is very special to you and to your skill set, and you want to make sure that you are spending as much time as you possibly can on those things because otherwise you're wasting your time and you're wasting your potential. So moving on, we want to make sure that you you know, we're able to understand everything from, from what we discussed, and then you have specific next steps for you going forward. So um, this is just a reiteration uh, to make sure the simple steps go forward. Um, a, number one, assess your time and your tasks and categorize them. Make sure you know what you're doing on a daily basis so that you know what you can give to somebody else. Uh, you don't want to hire somebody and not have work to give them. You don't want to uh, give people work that they shouldn't be doing. You want to make sure that you're comfortable with the workload and that you're making sure you're not keeping too much or giving too much away or anything like that. You want to make sure that you know what's going on in terms of the tasks. You want to create protocols and processes for those tasks that you're going to give away because you uh, need to make sure that they're being done properly. and it's always easier for someone to reference a document than to have to constantly come to you with questions. Uh, that again will just be a drain on your time and it's hard to manage yourself and to manage someone else if they're not able to have some kind of resource that can help them when you're not around. Next is you want to find reputable help. Uh, this can require, you know, this is, you know, that means hiring an assistant going on to a job board, posting your job, getting somebody to join your team, or that can mean outsourcing to a virtual assistant company. Like I said, that's very similar to what we do. So um, a lot of times you go to a company, they have a full team there available for you. They have experts on staff that can help you streamline your processes. And uh, it's just, you know, it's easy because they, they're usually very reputable. There's people around, you know, networking groups or wherever you can talk to and say, you know, I want to work with this company, how are they? So it, it, there's a difference there. It really depends on your needs. If it's something that you need someone there 40 hours a week, that's not really something a virtual assistant company should be working on. You should have a full timer, um, but really it depends on your needs. 
Uh, next, once you do have that person on your team, you want to communicate, 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 and make sure that you're both talking to each other and checking in and keeping on top of everything that, that needs to get done and make sure it's done properly. And then last, you want to make sure you're filling that extra time you have with money-making activities or with just some time off. If you, you know, like we said earlier, not having time off is, is a really huge problem. So you need to fill that extra time with something meaningful. Don't spend it on Facebook, obviously don't. You know, try not to waste the time you're given, capitalize on it, focus on your skills, make sure that what you're doing is driving your business or that it's helping you to be a, a better business owner. That's really where delegation, um, that's where it matters. You want to make sure you're being the best manager you can be, the best business owner you can be, and the best whatever your industry, whatever your job is, make sure you're being the best of that. That's why you get help so that you can be what you need to be to make sure your company reaches a level of success that, that you know it can. So that's all we have for delegation. I want to thank you guys very much for joining us. Uh, if you'd like any more information about our virtual assistant services here at C3 Workplace, or if you'd like to just discuss uh, more delegating best practices, you're always welcome to contact me. Again, my name is Kelly Loro. Email is here, phone number is here. And I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thanks very much, everybody.